Here we have a graph to look at, which should make all this make a bit more sense. So let's just jump right into it. Let's do this first limit as x goes to 0. So there's not a plus or minus after the 0, which tells me I'm taking a two-sided limit. I'm going to approach from the left and from the right, and as long as my fingers meet as I follow in, that's our answer. So we're just looking for the y value. Limits mean find the y value as you get close to this x value. So I'm going to approach 0 from the left and from the right. So I don't want to hop on way out here because that just might confuse me following in super far. We want to get near the x value. So maybe I'll just start at negative 1. And I'm going to figure out where the graph is to the left of 0 by plugging in or by following on negative 1. And there's no graph to follow down here. There's no line. So I'm going to hop on right here where there actually is a graph. So I'm going to get near 0 in the x value and follow in and figure out what the y value would be. So if I follow in from negative 1 and go towards 0 on the left, I stop kind of halfway between 0 and 1. So I would say maybe that left-hand limit is 1 half or 0.5. And then I'm going to do that from the right side as well. So to the right of 0 is 1. And I'm going to hop on the graph. There's no graph down here where 1 is, near 0 on the right. So that's why I chose 1. So I'm just going to follow in from the right side of 0. I'm going to go in towards x is 0 and see what y value I get close to. Well, my fingers meet, so the limit definitely exists because the left-hand limit when I followed in from the left side and the right-hand limit when I followed in from the right side look to be the same number. So that number, that y value, it's like halfway between 0 and 1, so I would say it's about 0.5. There we took our first limit. So if it's not clear right now, it's okay. We've only done it once. Let's do it again. So let's look below down here. We have as x approaches 1, and then there's a negative after it. Does that mean a left-hand limit or a right-hand limit? The negative side of a number line is the left side, so this is a left-hand limit. So I'm going to label it just so you have it. When you go to study for the final, this might be something that you forget somehow. Um, so just label it for yourself, and it makes studying for the final a lot easier. So we want to get near 1 just from the left side to see what we get. So I'm going to look at the graph. I want to find the x value 1. I want to get near it from the left side. So maybe I'll start at 0. It's to the left of 1, but kind of near it. Um, so if we look where the graph is, there's no graph below. It's only above. So I'm going to follow it and go towards 1 from the right side. Or sorry, from the left side. So if we follow in from the left side here, what's our y value that we get close to? It looks like the y value is 1. So remember, at an x value, if we were to plug in 1, there is no y value here. In algebra, we would just say undefined. It's not going to give us a y value. This is something that would make us divide by 0 in our calculator. So we would just say error, and our answer would just be undefined. But we're fancy calculus students now. We're saying if we can't plug in 1, let's go just to the left. Let's look at 0.9, and we'll see that it's almost 1, so the y value would have been 1. So that left-hand limit is 1. So something that we've learned from this is that open circles don't matter. Open circles don't matter. The only way a limit does not exist is if from the left and right you don't get to the same number. And that's not what happened here. We were only taking a left-hand limit and from the left we got to 1. Okay, there's our answer. Doesn't matter if it's open or closed because we don't care what's happening at the x value. We care about what's happening near it. Okay, so let's do the next one. The next one says we want to take the limit as x approaches 1, but only from the positive side. So the positive side of a number line is the right-hand side. So we're going to take a right-hand limit here and see what we get. So I'm going to hop onto the graph, and I want to go to the right of the x value 1. So if I go back up here, to the right of 1 is 2. And it's kind of confusing to where I hop on it to because it almost looks like the graph is there and then it kind of looks like it's there above. So I want to go a little bit more closer to 1 just so I know exactly which graph to hop on. So maybe I'll go at like x is 1.5 and see where the graph is. There's definitely no graph down below x is 1.5, but it is above. So I know to hop onto this piece of the graph. By the way, these are all functions, which means there's only one y value for each x value. So there's never going to be two places to hop on. There's only one option. And if we get near 1 to the right, we can see the option is this graph here. We're going to follow it from the right side in towards 1. So as I get closer to x is 1, my y value is... 1 at that open circle. So I go down here, my right hand limit is also 1. 
So if my left hand limit is one and my right hand limit is one, then my two sided limit is going to be one. They are the same number, so the limit is definitely not gonna be D and E. That only happens if from the left and the right you go to a different number. As long as they agree, then that's your limit, kind of like what we found for 0.5. So that's one way you can do it without looking at the graph, just because we already found the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit, so we already did some of the work ahead of the time. But let's, because it's our first time, let's go back and look at the graph and make sure we see that that's happening. So that this bottom one, which is a two-sided limit, because we have x approaches 1, it doesn't have a minus to mean left hand limit or plus after it to mean right hand limit. It's a two sided limit. So let's follow in from both sides and see that the answer really is going to be one. So my left hand limit, maybe I'll start at 0.5 is the left of one. I'm going to find where the graph is. There's no graph below, so I'm going to hop on up here. My left hand limit is one. And the same thing, I'm going to hop on at 1.5. There's no graph down here. It's up here. I follow it. And my left and my right, I get to the same number my fingers meet. There's my answer. The y value is one meaning the limit is 1. The limit is just finding the y value for an x value. Okay, let's keep going. Let's move on to this side over here. So we have the limit as x approaches 2 from the negative. Negative means which limit? Left-hand limit. So positive 2, but from the negative side. So here's 2. So from the left side, I could start at 1 or maybe just get closer and do 1.5 so I know exactly where the graph is. Um, but either way, to the left of 2, I'm going to hop onto the graph up here because there's no graph below here on the left side. That's on the right side of 2. So on the left side of 2, we have to go above to where the graph is. And I hop on, and it keeps going up as we approach the x value 2. So we approach the x value 2, the y value seems to go up forever. It doesn't look like it stops at 6 right above 2. It looks like it's going to keep going. So that left hand limit is going to be going up to positive infinity in the y value. Okay. So if we compare that to the right hand limit as x goes to 2 from the positive side, Let's see if we get the same thing. So let's go to the right of 2. So maybe at 3 is my x value. There's no graph above 3. It's below 3. So we're going to follow in from this right side. And as we follow in towards 2 from the right side, we go down without bound. So we're going to assume, because we don't see where it stops, that it's going down to negative infinity. So let's try to solve this without the picture first. Then we'll look back at the picture and see if we got it right. So as x approaches 2, our two-sided limit. Well, the left-hand limit is infinity and the right-hand limit is negative infinity. Are those the same numbers? No. You would rather have positive infinite amount of money in your bank account than owe the bank an infinite amount of money. Have it be a negative amount in your bank account and get all those fees. So positive infinity is way different than negative infinity. So if the left and the right-hand limit are not the same, the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit, then the two-sided limit is always going to be DNE. Your fingers have to touch. So let's look at that graphically to see why that is. So we're approaching 2 from both sides. So I'm going to hop on on the left of 2 and the right of 2 and figure out where the graph is. So for my left-hand limit, first of all, coming in from 1 to 2, I'm going up without bound. And then from the right side, going from x is 3 to x is 2, I'm going to go down without bound. My fingers do not meet. If they do not meet, the limit is DNE. These really don't meet, but even if it was going to 7 on one side and 10 to the other, our fingers still wouldn't meet, and the answer would be DNE. So one way of saying this is the left-hand limit does not equal the right-hand limit. Another way of saying this is your fingers don't meet. Anytime that happens, the limit does not exist. Okay. Our last one on this page, let's take the limit as x goes to 3. There's not a plus or minus after it, so it's a two-sided limit. So let's hop on the graph on both sides of 3 and see if we get to the same number. If we do, that's our answer. If we get to two different numbers, then the limit does not exist. So I'm going to approach 3 from the left side, so maybe I'll hop in at like 2.5. And, and then from the right side, I'm going to hop in at like 3.5. Both just barely to the left and just barely to the right, the graph is down here. And if I... Go in from the left side, my y value is negative 1. And if I hop on from the right side, my y value is negative 1. My fingers do meet. doesn't matter that it's an open circle. It doesn't matter if it's open or closed. That is my answer from the left and the right. Both sides go to 
negative 1. So there's my limit. The next page we have the same exact thing where we're going to look at graphs. Um, but before we do, I'm going to add in a couple bonus examples because on the homework, you'll see some other types of limits. So before we do the same exact thing on the next page, let's add in a couple extra limits um, for a little bit more difficult concept. What if we have x going to negative infinity and we want to find the limit of that and compare that to the limit as x goes to positive infinity. So just to give us a little preview of where we're headed in the next couple examples, let's look at these now. So if x is going to negative infinity, is that down? No. This is y going to negative infinity. Here's the y on the graph, and this is the x. So x is actually left or right. So negative infinity for the x value isn't going to mean down. Does it mean left or does it mean right? Negative numbers are on the left. So as we go to the left, what happens to the y value is what that's asking. So if x is going to negative infinity, we're going out to the left. What's happening to the y value? It's going to 0. So if we follow to the left and we keep going, it looks like it's going to keep going down. So we would just say to 0. So sometimes WebAssign will throw one like this at you um, where it has x going to infinity. So if it's negative infinity, that means the left. And it looks like the graph is going lower and lower. So I would just say it's probably going to stop at 0. It looks like that's where it's headed. If we compare that to the limit as x goes to positive infinity, so remember we're talking about x values, so we're not talking about up or down because that's y. So if x is going to positive infinity, is that the left or the right? I'm on the right side to the right is positive infinity for the x value, and we would follow it in, and as we get closer to positive infinity on the right, it looks again like we're approaching zero. It's not like a straight up arrow to say that we're going up forever. Something like a parabola would be going up as x goes up. But this looks like it's just kind of going to stop at zero. So that's a difficult concept that we're kind of working our way toward. Um, so just a little preview on that. So try the next page of the graph by yourself. See what you get. It's okay. You can cross out your answers and then look at the video and see what you got right and what you need to still work on.